Jake's eyes snap open, and he quickly turns his aside. But like his aching heart, the spot where Max always sat on the couch remains empty. He takes in a long, deep breath, with a little more of a sigh, and squeezes his eyes closed, hoping that by slipping the darkness of a nap, he will temporarily miss his Sarah. For 15 years, they were inseparable. Always side by side. The walks on a beach with a gentle waves calling. The seagulls calling. All those hides in a trail where the trees cannot be like arches wrapping them in a soft coal shade and huts and a dive and just arrived at the grocery store for something more than may have forgotten. They always went together. Though he knows in some ways he should be thankful for just having their time together. The home is forever each in his heart. And that sickness took Max quickly rather than dragging the pain for weeks, maybe even months. He still feels cheated that somehow his missing years that could have been. And he will sleep with locks around the empty room, letting his case fall upon the leash, where it still hangs at the pig with the tars. It seems to wait patient. Ever ever ready for the next big adventure. As his eyes fill up, he realized for the first time how much his grip weighs. How hard this have been rise with such heaviness inside. It is in here is a shuffle from behind and turns see Martin standing in the doorway, her shoulder resting against the frame. I thought you might be in here, she says. She looks down at him only for a moment. With her stare drips in the crotch. I miss him to Jake more than you'll ever know. There's a faraway melancholy tone in her voice, but he knows that her heart like his, as a hole too big to fill. His head drops in and, and he gives up another long sigh, which seems to prompt her to come over and kneel down into the carpet beside him. He slides a hand under his chin and lifts it up, then takes back his long floppy ears such as a dear, dear eyes can meet. I guess you do know, don't you, Jake?